All right, so in this lesson we tackle Riemann and trapezoidal sums. So these are ways of approximating the area underneath the curve. Okay, so in this first one we have a table. We have t and v of t. And we have the velocity of the truck at certain times. And we're going to use what kind of sum? We're going to use a trapezoidal sum with three subintervals to approximate the distance the truck travels. So this is just like our introductory problem uh, in the first lesson of the unit. So trapezoidal sum, our three subintervals are going to be sort of between the three, or the four numbers in the table, rather. Okay, so if we imagine these points, our first point is going to be, so I'm going to sketch the graph. So our graph might look something like this, right? So here are our subintervals. So 0, 20, 0.560, 240, 330. So we're finding the area of these little chunks like that. Okay, so when and down on these, you can always draw them. So remember the formula for the area of a trapezoid? this right one half plus this or one half times the sum of the bases times the height and in this case our bases are going to be y values so our bases are the lengthwise sides and the height is going to be the change in x so then i can go just straight through so for my first of my three subintervals. Remember, and 0.5 is the change in x, not this x right here. So 0.5 minus 0. Okay. So these are my three subintervals. Take a second, make sure you understand how I got all those. Uh, I'm kind of following this model here. And here is labeling one particular subinterval so you can understand how I got that. And then you just uh, do the math here. So that is well within everybody's capabilities. And I got 130 here. So make sure, if you're typing this on a calculator, make sure you include all your parentheses so that you're doing order operations correctly. So that would be B. So there's our trapezoidal sum. Um, that lesson corresponds with, that lesson corresponds with 2.1.3 on delta math. So if you didn't quite follow that, it might be good to rewatch the video from that particular lesson before moving on. Okay, so here we want uh, a left Riemann sum. So we're going to be making rectangles this time to estimate the area here. And we're going to use three subintervals. So notice it's the same kind of as before. Our three subintervals go with our four points. So I'm going to make a sketch for this one. Um, you don't have to make a sketch for these, but I find it helpful, so you will probably find it helpful too. Okay, so I've sketched my graph here of f of x, and obviously there would be some kind of curve under all these that we're trying to estimate, right? And I've also labeled it based on this on the points. So these points here, let me make them pop a little bit. These points here are from the table, and notice they are on the left hand corner of each rectangle. If the points were on the right hand corner, I'd be making a right Riemann sum, right? So that would look sort of like this, right? Would have my rectangles the opposite way. And we'll do that in the next problem. Okay, but once we have our sketch, then we're just finding the area of each of the rectangles in that sketch, okay? And that is a probably. 10th grade problem, 9th grade problem for you guys. So in this particular problem, we're just going to do base times height all the way across. So 4 times 25 for the first rectangle, plus 6 times 5, plus 8 times 20. Okay, so this would be, how would we write this down? So we'd say the integral from 0 to 50 of f of x dx, and then we do squiggly equal sign because it's an approximation, right? And when you do that math, you get 
290. So that is our left Riemann sum. Okay. Now we're going to do the right Riemann sum in the next problem. So I'm going to draw the same sketch. And I'm going to draw it just right here so you can see both. Okay, so here I've used the same points. And I've drawn three rectangles this time with the right corner of each rectangle on the points from our table. So we do have one more point that is 0, 4 over here. No, so we're not going to use that point. By the way, in this last example, for our left Riemann sum, notice I actually did not calculate the height of this rectangle, or the area of this rectangle, rather. So we never use 12 as a height, right? Um, so I should have made that clear earlier. That's why I drew four rectangles, because we had this point, it kind of hangs over. Um, but we didn't actually use that one, because we this is not um, a width that we have, right? Because we're out of points in the table. Same here. Like, I could draw another rectangle here, but we're out of points in the table. That's actually outside the bounds of our integral. Okay, so we're going to do the same math as we did before. Um, so base times height of the rectangle. First one is, we have 25 times 6 now plus 5 is the change in x times 8, plus 20 times 12. Okay. Um, so double check that you understand how I got that from each of the rectangles. Remember the x values are your change in x. So 25 is the change in x, 5 is the change in x from 25 to 30, and um, 20 is the change in x from 30 to 50. Then you just do the math, and I get I get 430. Okay. So question four now is the function in problems three and four increasing or decreasing? So a couple of people who did this before I made this video, and like who are clearly way smarter than I am, were like, "Duh, it's increasing because the y values are going up in the table." It's like, okay, sure. But we also know based on these Riemann sums. Okay, so because the right Riemann sum is bigger than the left, F is increasing. And that gets back to our idea of being an overestimate or underestimate, right? So if the right Riemann sum is bigger than the left Riemann sum, well, that means that the right Riemann sum has to be an overestimate. The left Riemann sum has to be an underestimate. And that is only true when f is increasing. Okay. And you can kind of see that based on the graph, right? So if I sketched some curve for f in this case, notice this is an overestimate of f and this would be an underestimate of f. Okay. But if you were like, if your initial thought was like, duh, it's increasing because it says so in the table, that's like, you know, work smarter, not harder kind of thing. Um, but you should be able to figure out, if I gave you two Riemann sums, you should be able to figure out if the function is increasing or decreasing based on them. Last problem here, or last two problems. We are looking for a right Riemann sum for this function from 2 to 3.5. Okay, so our first step is going to be to figure out how many subintervals we're going to use. And we want three subintervals of equal length. So we could do one of these guys. We could subtract the bounds and divide by 3. This gets us 1.5 over 3, which is 0.5. So we want subintervals of 0.5. And we're going to use, so we'll use two, um, we can actually just make a table here, two, 2.5, three, 3.5. That gets us our three subintervals, and then x, f of x. So we'll figure out what each of these is. So two to the third power is eight, and then I'm gonna reach for my calculator for the rest of these. Okay, now, so we see our change in x is 0.5 every time, but I'm actually going to write that out. 
so you can see which intervals I'm using with which y values here. So 2.5 minus 2 times, it's a right Riemann sum, so I'm going to use the right hand value in the table. Okay, so these are the areas of my three rectangles for my three subintervals, right? And notice like these all, their subintervals of equal length, we know these are all going to be 0.5, right? The important thing though is I use, for each one I use the three right hand y values, right? So we ended up not using I shouldn't highlight it like that. We ended up not using 8. And for each of these intervals, I use the right-hand y value that goes with my two x's. Okay, and then I'm just going to do the math here. This is a calculator problem. Make sure you use parentheses. You can also, this is actually easier, you can factor out that 0.5 and then just do 0.5 times the sum. So that's why it's useful to use subintervals of equal length. So I get 42.75 here. Okay. And is my solution an overestimate or an underestimate? Well, we use a right Riemann sum, and the function is increasing. Okay, so there's a couple ways you can go about this. You can memorize it, or you can think about it graphically. So my right Riemann sum, when the function is increasing, we can look at our graph that we sketched in the last one, is an overestimate. So this is an overestimate. 